Hey, good morning. It's time for Coffee Talk. I'm Guido. I've got my coffee. I hope you've got your coffee or your tea. I have my incognito white cup today. And a nice French roast. Delicious. We're going to talk about some of the standard stuff today and the rest of the things that have gone on in World of Tanks for the last week. We've got mission and updates or mission updates specials. We'll take a look at that. Kursk is coming to an end. We're going to look at the store and depot revamp. They recently revamped that. Interesting that they pushed that out on a micro patch. We'll talk about that just a little bit. The subjects du jour, we're going to take a look at, and uh, this is a warning, warning. <laughs> I have, I've watched a video on the Kharkov update. We're going to take a look at what that looks like in super test right now. I have a bad feeling about this, but we'll talk about that when we get there. And then uh, WGNA answers questions. Number three is out from Reddit there. We'll take a look at that as well. See what WGNA folks have to say to the questions, which have been pretty fair so far. Both questions and answers, and then we'll get into the conclusions. Let's get started. Grab your coffee. Relax on a Sunday morning and we'll get going. So as always, we're going to shill first, but the first thing I want to show you is something kind of interesting here. So as I make it work, come over here to the website and we have this... Uh, I don't pay too much attention to everything. I kind of know what I want and where I'm going to go, but sometimes I look at it and see what other possibilities are. And there's this banner across the top that says Battle of Kursk, which I said, okay, good. That's something I'm working on. And then I noticed four days, and I'm like, oh, well, what's what's four, four days? And then there's this calendar thing, which you can't actually click on. So there's a calendar. It says four days ends in Battle of Kursk special. <laughs> All right, this is a graphic design thing. And perhaps this, the way this is set up is maybe draws the eye. It drew my eye, I guess, so maybe it worked. But the order of everything just confused the living crap out of me. <laughs> I'm like, four days ends in? What, is, what does that mean? Oh, Battle of Kursk, special event, ends in four days. <laughs> oh, man, guys, I don't know. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more because the website is laid out that way in a lot of cases. Let's jump into the premium shop and see what they got since I make it work. There we go. Okay, so the featured stuff. We got the Suma, we've got the A45. The 1357 is on sale right now. Highly recommend that if you are a scout guy, French guy at all, or if you just want what is really pretty much an overpowered scout tank, light tank, this is a fantastic tier eight tank. It will do every mission up to the 260, no problem. So think about that if you're spending money, that's a good one. Got the pilot out, we have the 50 TP is still out, and the Pudel and the Loza. So there's quite a few of those war chest things. We'll jump over here. Now look at the order of this. We got a we got a heavy, and then we've got a tier. What tier is this thing? I think this one's a seven. And then we have a light, and then we have an eight medium, then we have a seven heavy, and then we have an eight heavy, and then a six and a six. Okay, just remember that for a moment. Before we get there, jump over the gold. This is actually a pretty good deal for the PayPal left 192 i don't know what that means <laughs> i dug around a little bit trying to figure that out is paypal only going to let people do that 192 more times can i do it 192 well if you click on it it says you can only do it once per person so i don't 192 days perhaps because that's kind of what some of this other stuff is 11 days but it didn't say 11 days it says left 192 <laughs> left 192 degrees okay got it unknown that is a mystery can make a couple assumptions, but hard to tell. And premium account over here. Nothing special there on the premium account stuff. There is actually an interesting thing on the specials we'll talk about in a moment. Go back over to vehicles, and this is that order thing I just talked about. Now the 57 is on top, so to speak. Then the 42 FV201, then the Suma, then the Pudel, and, which is a 6, and then an 8. <laughs> How hard is it to put them in tier order and, and some kind of heavy, medium, light, TD, or whatever? Does Again, th these are things I often wonder and posit on my channel. Do they change really anything? Not, not too much. 
But if I was a new player and I was trying to dig around and figure out what was for sale, this would be, that's just a hodgepodge. It's just thrown into a bin. It's like, here's our, here's our sale items into the bin. Oh, I just bashed into the wall. Here's our sale items into the bin. <laughs> Rummage around and find us something if you like it right there. I really should edit stuff like that out, but I, honestly, I'm too lazy. <laughs> I don't think you guys are here for the professional quality of the video. <laughs> Oh, it's better, right? It's better. I, I should shave, though. I should shave. All right. That's enough sidebars. Boosters we're not going to bother with. Go over to specials. <clears throat> and we've got kind of the same stuff. This is a discussion I've had before where a, what's the difference between a special and a featured? Well, one's special, one's featured. Okay, noted. But <laughs> really, what's the difference? Why, why do you have that? <clears throat> I bring that up also again today because they did a little bit of work on the UI, which we're going to get to where they made their menu system a little make a little more sense. So work in progress. I think I have to go back over to the gold of the feature to get what I wanted to talk about. Maybe just further down. No, maybe it's on the gold. There's a couple deals here. Ah, here, that's right. So this quick starter kit, I think I mentioned it last week. This is still around. This is available to me, so unknown if you have it. You may have, I think it's one per person. Sometimes you get stuff that is aimed right at you. So you may not see the same things that I see, but this is a 49% discount at $499, really, which is a great deal for the three days of premium. You get 1,000 gold also and 100,000 credits. The credits are meh, whatever. But for five bucks, holy cow, that, that's actually a pretty dang good deal right there. And what's funny to me is I was perusing this and went down here and said, oh, here's another three-day deal, but it's uh, $28.99. <laughs> now, the difference here is that you are... <laughs> That just kills me. The difference here is you're going to get the 2,800, 2,800,000, math is hard, 2,800,000 credits, which is, to me, a complete waste of money, unless you just really need to save time and you've got to have, well, that would even buy a tier 9, will it? I don't think so. It'll get you a tier 8 or the rest of the way. But anyway, <laughs> just some things to think about on that. I thought a lot of that's pretty funny. So let's go over and look at the missions that are going on this weekend, which I should do a mission thing on Friday because really at this point it's probably too late. <laughs> First I wanted to show this. Hooray. I got my T34S. I played it four or five times. I think I've won one game, maybe two. <laughs> not a bad tank. Plus some goodies came with it. The garage slot, if you're not really a collector, that might be more important to you than even the tank. But at Tier 5, I, I would not recommend getting rid of Tier 5s. There are recovery processes, which is... That's actually kind of an issue right now because I sort of took it out of the UI. I won't dive into that whole thing. There is a way to do it. Scorpiani has an example of how to do it on the main forum. Uh, so if you want to do that, there's a kind of a workaround where you can find the button that lets you recover, which they took out with a little bit of the UI redesign. But anyway, for as far as missions go, I got that done. That was 30 of those finished on Kursk. And I want to say there's, remember that, what, was, what did it say? Four days left, I think there so I should get a few more goodies along the way so I'll, I'll say affirmative thank you very much and that's kind of the rework they did a little bit it's I like it that this button says battle of Kursk and this says missions and it was no it's no longer missions and events or whatever the heck they have up there hopefully they keep that going on and that the missions are in missions and any special events or marathons are their own button T5051 TBP 50 T5051 50, is on track well, that's a mouthful say that 10 times fast that is the Czech medium line, which is a pretty dang good line, minus the TVP, which is a sort of a dog. The rest of them are actually pretty good, especially the 9 and 10. So if you're even thinking about grinding that, that's a good one to go for. Tank Mastery, there's the standard two of those going on. I don't quite understand why it's like that, where they're overlapped. What? <laughs> I don't get it. I, I, I don't understand that. Why are, why are they overlapped and offset so there's always two going on at one time why don't they just put eight on at one time and then swap them over so I, it's weird maybe that's something that facilitates grinding or hopping between tanks if you're trying to do them all i suppose that's possible but it's not a marathon where you're building stuff up it's just simply getting an ace so again i don't understand <laughs> why it's like that not a big deal but it's weird supply raid this is the standard what you get on the weekend when there's nothing big going on And it's damaged stuff, yada yada, you get some big kits. And this is probably the best thing you can get out of this right here. So you do this twice. 
you can do this twice in 24 hours. So really over a three day weekend, that's math in public, what, six times three, 18 large kits. And if you're a new guy running a new account, that's 180,000 credits if you sell them right off the bat. You don't really need these things. Initially, anyway, when you get to the higher level, you're going to want to run large kits and the automatic fire extinguisher and all that good stuff. What I typically would have done is sell the repair kit and the med kit and keep the large fire kit because large fire kits is what I run in every tank that I run a fire fire kit, fire extinguisher, and every tank that I run a fire extinguisher in. So, in any event, it's f extra free credits for you because you don't really need to run these. You can. I mean, that's the other thing you can do is you just run them and, and who cares. But you tend to burn through these so much faster because you're fixing crew or fixing equipment on your tank. Whereas you don't get lit on fire that much and this reduces the chance of it to begin with off the top. Double crew XP for victories, that's always nice. And then the other missions, which these are the marathon things which most people should be done with by now where you get the free camo I talked about last week and the free inscription. So make sure you put those free inscriptions all over your tank because those are the best. <laughs> They're not the best. They're <laughs> We talked about that last week. We won't get into that. We'll let that. We're gonna let that one go. We'll just let it go. We're gonna. It's the new. It's the new Guido. We're just gonna let it. Go. That's not true. We're not letting anything go. We'll keep. We'll keep trucking here. All right. Let's move on. Okay. So Bravo War Gaming, you have done something good with your UI. You got rid of the, that weird store depot hidden in the store thing. Whatever it was called before. Was it called the store and then the depot was in the store? I don't even remember. I'd have to go look at it at an old. I have an old recording, but who cares? Because now we have store and depot, and that makes sense to me. There's the store, there's the depot. There's some interesting things about this. Let's dive into the store first off. And some of this may have existed, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Why it takes so long to load, I don't know. This is pretty cool. So this says best. <laughs> this is That's a word they use a lot. I don't know if that's a translation or if there's actually a, a North American web designer that loves this word. But if it's something good, if it's if it's the good part, it's best. It's not top deal or best deal. It's just best. <laughs> so here's the best. Here's something that I did not know they were doing. And I don't know if it's new with the new... Let me know down below. I don't know if it's new with the new UI here. But for a while, I was kind of curious. What the heck is this? Does this Is this something I click on and it takes me to the website? Because you know they had that in the past. You could click to say buy now. You click it. It takes you over to the website to the purchase page and you purchase it and that's all good to go. What this is though, apparently, is what this is is, depends on what the word is is, the meaning of the word is is, um, <laughs> that's as political as we're getting, we're not going any further than that. The <laughs> one day of premium plus four additional experience battle large and it's 425 gold. So that's actually pretty cool. So now they're giving you little package deals to spend your gold. This one was 1,370 normally. It's minus 19% up at top. Their percentages are so bizarre. 13 and 19. I just I, <laughs> for 1,100 gold, you get nine three days of premium and 12 additional combat per battle. That's actually pretty cool. Initially, when I was clicking on this, I went, "What the? What does this mean? It's a discounted. I get these premium and these things, but..." I'm also going to get some gold, but somehow I was going to get more gold. Now I get less gold. No, that's that's what you're spending. That's what it's going to cost. <laughs> and that's the discount. That one took me a while to figure out because I'm denser than most. And then we've got a discount up to 50% on researchable vehicles. I've had this sitting around for a while. I believe this is a holdover for me from because if I click on it, it goes to this tier four check from last Christmas when... Remember when we had the marathon last Christmas, you could get discounts on the check line, I believe it was. Or maybe it was any tier. I don't remember how it worked, but there was a level of reward where you could get a 50% discount on a tier 4 tank. I chose it on this tank. I never ended up buying it. It's just I, I had to pick a tier 4, and that's the one I ended up choosing. I just haven't ever I don't play tier 4, so that's still hanging out there. Which is funny to me because this whole big card is just going to be hanging around until I do that, I guess. Because if you remember, the deal was that discount would be there forever until you bought it. <laughs> Maybe I'll, that'll just be my thing. So that's best. Pretty cool. And we go over here and we go to we'll hover over it and say what it is. Gold. So here's the gold that you can get. Now this is going to take you, I believe, actually, you know what? I forgot about this. I think, my, from what I understanding is, it looks like you can now buy it within 
the UI within the client. If anyone's tested this, I don't want to spend any money right now, but I, I did click to purchase. I'm not going to do it right now. And it seemed to be able to do it within the client. So what I don't know is if it eventually takes you to the web page. Let's take a look at that. And I don't want to click any of this because I don't want any of my information to come up if it happens to be there. It's got two save mes methods, which it must be taking off of the website. So now it looks like it's sharing info between the two. I, I'm not, from a security standpoint, I'm not too jazzed about that, to be quite honest. Because now you've got a game client. I don't know, man. I mean, I, is it any different than the website? I, I guess not potentially, but uh, I'm not really jazzed about that. But it is convenient if that's how it's working. So you can get some gold deals right here. I don't see any... I don't see any discounts on this on whether these are some kind of good package deals or not. Premium account, same thing. There's those two things I was offered. Here's the other ones. And I don't see any of the deals. There's some vehicles that you can get. Now these are for gold right here. So depending on how much gold you've got, obviously I don't have enough. I only got 3,500, so I can't really afford any of those packages. But I can afford, I suppose, no, nope, not quite. Almost can afford the AC4 if I would even want it. But this is good because this appears to be dynamic, showing you tanks, at least these down here, showing you tanks you don't have. So these I think are the only four tanks on the tech tree, the gold tanks, premium tanks on the tech tree that I don't own. So not bad, not bad. I'm gonna click on that, let's see. Oh, it shows you, then go to purchase, and it'll tell you, sorry, dude, you don't have, uh, what you, actually it's, Somehow it's letting me go, even though it knows I don't have enough gold. So <laughs> that's interesting. All right. Usually it tells you, sorry, sucker. Maybe it'll take you to a point where you can pay the rest via cash. Don't know. All right. Service. Again, in the store. Now, this is where you can buy equipment, consumables, personal reserves, and directives. And it's all kind of big icon which i haven't mentioned that idea yet remember it used to be a lot of lists and it had some pretty good sorting functions but now everything is a picture and not a lot of words which is odd to me but you've got this kind of your firepower survivability mobility it's all there's some bundles actually which is interesting you smooth aiming you get some uh you get, or you spin that with bonds sorry these are directives not bundles, directives. I thought there were some bundles over in the equipments. Yes, here we go. There are bundles in the equipment where for X silver you get this group. I didn't do the math. I'm assuming that's a discount, but it's hard to tell. Why it would matter. Why would you why would you want a bundle if it didn't give a discount? And I'd be surprised if they gave a discount. So that's kind of, seems to be kind of a throwaway event. All bundles. Oh, there's even more bundles. What? <laughs> I this is one of those things that somebody sitting around said, "Looks, this is, this is a cool idea. Let's do this." And then I'm, everyone who's played it for any amount of time is like, mm. "And maybe a new guy likes it. I don't know, but that's bizarre." And then here's the equipment. Which can anybody tell me the particular order of this equipment? It's not alphabetical, is it? No, wait, it is. Have they done that? B, C, no, no, it's not alphabetical. It's not alphabetical. It's not by firepower or whatever their things up here are. It's just randomly thrown in there. And it's not lists. And I, I got used to the lists. They kind of made sense. And now it's a bunch of icons. So I, I don't know. I'm, but the jury's out on that one. Let me know what you think down below. I will say it looks better. I will absolutely give them that. I don't know if the functionality is better. And I know that some of the sorting mechanisms are gone. And people have complained about that. And then we can get down into the items for bonds, which you can see in my entire career of World of Tanks, I haven't even got 4,000 yet because I don't tend to play the the tier 10 events and things that give you all the bonds. Indirectives, which are actually pretty cool. I haven't delved into these. I have used these a little bit. These are not bad, the directives, actually. They, t they give you some uh, bonuses or give you skills and perks you don't have for that particular match. Six cents maybe being one you might want to do. And that is that for the store. So let's jump over to the depot. The depot is interesting. The first thing you're gonna get here is modules and shells for sale. Make 
mark everything for sale and now up here then so no more clicky 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 through each one you can actually sell everything you have for sale or you can unclick it and sell what you don't want to sell and I don't have a lot because I've already cleared this out but you can have modules you can have equipment you can have ammunition all those things that you want to try to sell that are sitting around in your depot that makes a lot of cash and it's easier now to do so so good on them for that that's actually a good deal and we come down to here to what's in stock this is what's in stock now here's the problem with this a little bit this is everything I have in my depot got a lot of ammo to get down here to the consumables so that's all of it and it is ordered by equipment ammo consumables which is not alphabetical but whatever <laughs> or you can sort it select it by equipment not sort consumables modules which I don't have any on shelves right or you go all so that's everything but if I go up here you can see that I only have stuff that's not compatible right the stuff that's not compatible module and shells for sale so I'm looking at going well what the heck how do I sell that thing well now I gotta come on here and do that and click on it to sell it <laughs> So it may be that you want to sell stuff that's compatible, but this up here is modules and cells. Displays modules and shells that are not compatible with your vehicle. <laughs> well, how do I, where's the click to put all of them up here so I can select, I may want to sell these. Maybe I don't care if it's compatible, maybe I just want to sell it. Well, no, you got to come down here and click the sell button. <laughs> all right, guys, this is this is a half measure. You, oh, you almost got there. <laughs> You almost got there. There needs to be another click here that says include equipment compatible. Now they have to be careful. Why? Because people will come through here and go, oh, sell. And then all the stuff that they had that was compatible with their various vehicles gets sold. And then they're writing a, a ticket into customer service, whining about uh, having clicked on that. So, But that's why when you come here, you have it unmarked, but it's there. So that you then click it and everything shows up and I can go bourgeois and I sell it. Like I'm a bourgeois, you sell everything right there. But I think they're getting there. Not bad. Again, I'm okay. I guess I'm okay with the big icons on this because I sort of understand what everything is. But when I'm searching for it to buy it, it's a little more difficult. Can you have both? Eh, probably not. All right. Vehicles in the garage. This is wholly useless. I don't really even understand why this is here. Was this here before? Could I sell a vehicle out of the depot last time? Maybe. I never once used it. If I want to sell a vehicle, I'm going to go into my garage, go to the carousel, dig around, find it, and then sell it. This, I don't even know why. Yeah, so I can sell it from there. It's very strange why that's even there. That seems a waste of time, to be quite honest. And personal reserves, there you go. They're right there. The little garage item right there. That was another thing I wanted to mention is find, finding out how many you have was very easy before because the numbers were very large and the list was right there. But now it's, it's by this little hanger guy and then it gets occluded when you put your <laughs> cursor over what stop doing that <laughs> okay yeah because what people are going to do they're like okay let's see i'm going to get a uh let's see let's see if we can go down here oh, i'm on ammo let's go to everything wait a minute what the heck's going on here oh it's up here right, how many uh ram large calibers do I oh man <laughs> that's what you do right you got your cursor and you're looking at stuff, you're like, okay, oh God, how many do I have? Heavy small liners, I have one. <laughs> uh, small thing, guys, but UI matters, it really does. It's got to be easy and makes sense. It has to be intuitive. Covering up the number you have when somebody's searching around and putting their icon over it or putting their cursor over it is probably not the greatest idea. All right, so there you go. The store and depot have been split, which is fantastic. Work in progress, I hope. Now, here's the interesting part about it for me is this came out in a micro patch, right? Usually, something this large, a rework this large, is saved for the big patches that ha have every month and a half, two months, three months, whatever the interval happens to be. Kind of varies. So, I don't remember anything this large on an on the interface being changed in between a patch. So, is this? A one-off is this a sign of things to come of a more iterative improvement process I hope it is I hope it is a sign of a more iterative flexible and responsive improvement process where they can look at some of these things and fix them as they go one of the drawbacks is I don't personally care because I don't use the mods anymore one of the big drawbacks though is if it screws up screws with mods 
And when you start messing with text and some of the functionality of mods and things like this in the UI, it really does mess with especially the garage mods on on what's going on with the garage. You know, if, you, if someone builds a mod that sorts this better or makes this look better, if they do an iterative every few weeks upgrade to the store and depot and proving it, that can really jack with the mods. I, I get it. A lot of people care. I, I personally don't. So, heck with you. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, I moved to the, I moved to the other side. <laughs> I wanted you to see the mini map on this. This is the test stuff, and it's all on Rushki for Kharkov, <clears throat> which, as you remember, had the circle down here that was ish useful ish. This was not very useful up here. They have opened up the northwest quite a bit, and they've changed the circle. And you can see the middle is even a little more open. We'll take a look at it as we go. And the reason I'm showing this is, is not to get too crazy about super test or test maps. I, I usually leave that alone, like I've said in the past. I'm not too not that interested in it until it actually gets closer to come out or it actually comes out. And we see what the final product is. So losing your mind about what's going on in super test is, is something somewhat of a waste of a time. But as we have seen, sometimes they start going down rabbit holes that they really shouldn't go down. And I read this in a text thing, and, I, and when I saw this video, I decided to take a look at it because I was curious how it looked. And the curiosity is about the circle right here, which is the iconic part of Kharkov, apparently. The, I'm assuming it's the city center. And they talked about only two ways in and two ways out. And it's hard to see but down here, but the green arrow shows you can go in and out on these holes, and you can only go in on these holes. Well, what does that mean? We'll take a look at it, and we'll move along here. and. <laughs> See this little ridge thing? That's down here. And this green guy, you just flew by it, but it's the same thing. You can drive off that ledge, I guess, because this guy's dead right there. I think that's what he did. But he got wasted. Because everyone's come down here to snipe at each other. <laughs> On a hold down sniping ledge. <laughs> I mean, Han Solo, I have a bad feeling about this. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I do not get that. I, I honestly do not understand that. How, what is that? First of all, for me, a good map is a map that has a symbiotic relationship between everything so that most of the map is useful and playable and worth working on, depending on what strat you're going with or what the enemy's doing. In the case of Kharkov, especially the older one, People would come down here, but it was a very stagnated fight. Eventually, they learned that if you brought a good enough force of mediums, and maybe even some heavies, you could sneak around here, come around and, wipe, and take them out, and then you would own this corner of the map. So it was important as far as that goes. But it could be a very stagnated sniping fest of people just peeking across. When you go and make better sniper holes to where it looks like it's even harder to come around here, I don't understand. That seems like it's turning this into a no-go. And now it's a pit. There's a it's lower ground right here. That's, that's so. Why would you enter the arena of doom only to get sniped to pieces by these guys over here? That's going to make this part of the map, at least the way I see it right now, completely unusable. Up here, it looks more interesting. I think it will get there eventually. This is a pretty good fly through. I'm going to turn him down because nobody knows what he's saying. Actually, some of you may know what he's saying. I have no idea what he's saying. Talking about there, some guys fighting. That's the that's the same kind of hole that used to be. He's right here in this green part. So move forward. Oh, he's got to restart. There we go. And this looks to be maybe we moved on to the other map. Yes, we have moved on to the other map. All right. So there you go. That was my concern about Kharkov. I'm trying to see if I can find the section for you that shows the more open spot here. There we go. So up here, you can see the more open spot where that used to be a bit of a pit down there. So it looks a little bit more usable, but it still seems to be swept by fire, A, by artillery, and B, by guys hanging out in the, the buildings down here. You can see this is a little more open too. There's there's fewer, I guess, routes to go through, it looks like. There used to be a very long corridor right there, but now it's open. They've removed buildings on both sides. There used to be buildings here and here, which are gone. So now only the center area right here is a bunch of buildings and then everything else is opened up. And so it looks like artillery is going to have a lot more to do on this map than they used to. This was a very difficult artillery map. It was hard to find a good spot on this map. And depending on which way the battle is going, you definitely had to reposition to get any kind of shots. So they've definitely opened it up. You're going to suffer a little bit more artillery and that's unfortunate. But Opening it up also brings up a little more open flowing battle provided the artillery isn't able to completely clamp down. And unfortunately, 
this is getting off into another rabbit hole. Three artillery clamps down any map. That that's the problem with three artillery and artillery in general. So no map will be immune to three artillery. That's any kind of open. But at least the openness means that you can move around a little bit, and hopefully it has some kind of crossfire. But it really, if you look at it, I don't know. You know, I guess there are some more openings to shoot out here, but. These guys are kind of in trouble by anyone who's posted up in here, side scraping heavies, things like that, TDs. Not really sure what you're going to do. There doesn't seem to be a lot of cover and everything when you move across is fairly open. So again, another maybe no-go zone up here and the whole fight really centers around here and just making sure people don't flank you this way and this way. The end of the game, right? And that's what Erlenberg's turned into, the big brawl in the middle. There's a big brawl in the middle with... Uh, Making sure nobody flanks you on the one side or on the other side. You know what I mean? So there you go. All right, that's that's the Karkov stuff that I found out. Let's move on. All right, it's always fun to do the questions and answers with these guys. All right, always fun. So these have been pretty straightforward. And, uh, you know, shout out to the NA guys for giving pretty straightforward answers. But sometimes it gets pretty funny. <laughs> Let's just take a look at it. Console has a single player mode. I didn't know that. Console has a single player mode. Are we going to get one? Uh, I think it's a maybe. They're looking into it. They want to make the AI good. I don't know why the AI is good enough for console, but not for uh, for PC. Actually, that's a rhetorical question. I know the answer to that. I'm not interested in PVE, but a lot of people are. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Spectator mode for strongholds and clan wars. That would actually be pretty cool, where you could move around on your own team and kind of watch. That would really change a little bit what you would do with calling as well, potentially. Uh, Interesting. Keep an eye on that one as well. There's some options right there. I've often thought that maybe if a caller... used to be a setup where you would have some Tier 8s and a Tier 1. And I've often thought if the caller ran at the Tier 1 and ended up dying early, all of a sudden now he could move around. That would be very interesting. And I guess you can do that, honestly. You do sort of have spectator mode. You can move from tank to tank once you die. But if you could bring a spectator that's not a player, that would be really fascinating. Okay. Here's the, one of the best ones right here, <clears throat> early on. What exactly, how exactly is it decided by Wargaming that a tank is overperforming or underperforming? Why is it that it can seem to take a year or more to make this determination whenever player base is calling for action? So here's an interesting answer. We try to make our decisions based on hard data rather than our feelings. Okay, fair enough. I mean that it seems very easy to judge a vehicle from a subjective point of view. Okay, I don't... I don't think anyone does that, but more about that in a minute. But it easily can become a rush, wrong judgment. Okay, fair enough, true. Once a new vehicle is added, it's quickly adopted by the most active and often the most skilled of our players. Yes, caveat, we'll get to that in a minute. Plus others have a very limited knowledge on how to combat this new enemy, true. What its weakness is, where to shoot it, and so on. So, for the first several months, any statistics related to it are distorted because of who is playing it, sort of, and how people play against it. After a while, usually in about a half a year, give or take, stats stabilize, and we can separate the human factor from vehicle power to draw any conclusions on how the vehicle actually performs. All right, fair enough. Look at the numbers, make a, make a more subjective or a more objective, not subjective, potentially, uh, answer on what you need to do. So don't rush it. Got it. <clears throat> yes, it takes a while for the stats to stabilize. However, this part here. Where is it? Uh, it's quickly adopted by the most active and often the most skilled of our players. Yes, absolutely true. However, the caveat you missed there that is very important to understand is the very good players will shit can it if they find out it's crap quickly. All right. So it doesn't take six months for the very good players to find a good tank. In fact, it takes days for the very good players to find the next meta good tank. Then watch Clan Wars or Strongholds. And how many of them show up? And if everything starts showing up, then you know you have what is probably an overpowered tank. Additionally, for who plays it and the statistics and knowing how to fight it, the next thing you look at is if bad players are overperforming it. If bad players are overperforming it. It's being adopted by all the good players. It's becoming meta as far as clan wars and competitive battles go. They are running a higher percentage and the bad players are flocking to it. And they're running a better percentage. The 268v4 is a classic example. Now, that's that's an outlier. It's an easy one to, to do. But there are other tanks that have a similar... Uh, what sort of like for? A similar flow. The Defender, the 252U, is another good example. 
adopted by everyone, overperformed in by everyone. So you didn't need all this stuff that you're talking about. This works when you don't drop a obviously overpowered tank into the game. This is a good idea. This is what you should be doing for all tanks right here. But there are a couple examples lately where this is not the whole story, and that's not exactly the right answer, in my opinion. In my opinion. All right. Uh, bring all chat back. No, they're not doing that. <laughs> I was very against them taking it out. I don't miss it. It just is a good... Uh, it is a good incentive for me to not do it. It's not really an incentive because you just can't, but it stops me, let's put it that way, from yelling at people on the other team. So that's, uh, I'm not going to say that's good. I, I enjoyed that part. I've talked about this in the past, long, long time ago when this was a, an issue, but I enjoy the banter and the back and forth. I can do without the racism and the, all the ridiculousness. But even then, sometimes I just have to laugh at the idiocy of people. But that aside, which is toxic and we don't need it, I enjoyed the kind of back and forth with people, especially if I saw somebody that I knew and I gave them grief when they either got me or I got them. So, I don't know. Okay, with regards to the maps, here's another good one. Will there be any effort put forward into making maps more fluid for matches? <laughs> Not sure what this question is about. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. You know exactly what it's about. Match fluidity is a combination of multiple factors. True including the layout, the map itself apparently is what he's saying there. I don't know why it has to say layout. Tier the match is being played, okay. Combination of vehicles in both teams and their exact competition. It's breakdown, players' personalities, individual tactics, blah, 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 blah. That's pretty good actually. So there's somebody who actually understands the the gameplay and the game. So that's that that answer, even if you don't agree with what he comes up with, is indicates pretty deep knowledge on how it works. So that's that's a good thing. Maps that are designed to reduce the variety of these factors are generally unpopular. <laughs> correct. <laughs> That's correct. And sooner or later are called off for the redesign. Unfortunately, not a redesign or redesign is equally successful. The question is, is fair in my mind to some extent, but I'm going to say that with the, re the recent redesigns, um, not the redesigns, with the maps that were pulled out of the game, those, those were not very fluid maps. They were kind of the face punch maps, but I, I kind of liked them. Kharkov, for example, the uh, Pilsen and, and the other one, the other Stalingrad or whatever it was. I actually liked those maps because as as brawling maps, they really weren't that corridor-y to me. There were ways to move around from building to building to get into different positions. There were While there weren't really great sweeping flanking kind of capabilities like you might find on Malinovka, for example, um, or Erlenberg. There were little localized change of angle capabilities in there. I liked those maps. I did. I, I want a combination of... I, I don't like channelized, though, where there's just one or two or three, but usually one or two main push areas, and that's the only one that's worth going to with no kind of cross flow capability. That's what I don't like. I'm okay with face punch maps that have a lot of different possibilities. So I think they're falling down a little bit on that. I think they looked at, at Kharkov and Pilsen and Stalingrad and said, well, these are these are the kind of maps people like. They're channelized. Well, I don't think that's true. I think people like those maps quite a bit. What they don't like are things like, it's not Glacier, Mountain Pass. With the that mountain pass is ridiculous. You go, there's one big channel or one big channel. There's a dead zone in the middle and there's a bridge across the dead zone. I mean, that that map is terrible. But anyway, that's me riffing on that whole thing. Would it be possible first to get more detailed feedback on the validation team? This is about mods. So that's, I don't really, I'm not worried about mods. <laughs> they asked about RNG. Are they looking at changes? Uh, there are multiple RNG elements. Generally, when players speak it, they mean damage and pen. That's true. There's a lot of other RNG roles, though, in the game other than those. These rules represent shell quality, variance, and other variables too complex to calculate in real time. Look, here's... <clears throat> RNG makes this game. It really does. This would be a completely different game if everywhere you pointed, that's where it hit. That's where the shell hit. It would then be much more of a run and gun, much more of a twitch game, which is, this is the antithesis. This is the anti-twitch game. There are some elements of that. But because of the RNG and the variance that that puts in there, you've got to continually think on your feet. 
that shot may not go. You may not do that damage. What are you going to do next? What's your plan if it doesn't? That has to be taken into account. And while the fog of war and things like that are always difficult to put into a game, if you think about your board games with dice rolls, you know, you come up double ones and you blow up. You don't actually do any damage. You die. That kind of thing. Sometimes that, that kind of rule set can be too harsh and too much of that it just makes it random and not fun. But in the case of World of Tanks, they're pretty close. Personally, for me, the RNG, if it would come down 10, 15%, depending on which one we're talking about, I would love to see a test with that. Where they bring the accuracy down to maybe plus or minus 15% and the damage plus or minus 10. I would even say if the damage stayed at plus or minus 25, that, that would be okay because at least you're doing some damage. But if the accuracy came down a little bit, that would be a little more interesting to me. Um, that might change, necessitate some change to dispersion, which again would look like sometimes at no change, but I'm not going to get in that whole dispersion and, and RNG thing. But it's an interesting discussion. And my main point of all that is that I don't think a lot of us would like World of Tanks if it didn't have RNG in it. I know we hate it. I know we rail against it. I know sometimes it feels unfair and it's doing something mean to you and it's out to get you and blah, 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 blah. But really, at the end of the day, this game works because of RNG. And that's, of course, that's why it doesn't work as a, necessarily as a competitive game. And that's unfortunate because this idea that RNG makes it not a competitive game, I, I disagree with that because really the competitiveness comes down to the strategy, to the positioning, to the being able to react to the good and the bad things. And sometimes the good and the bad things just happen. Now, I, it's RNG is the enemy of skill, so... I, I do understand the arguments as far as against it, but I don't really agree that they're the end-all, be-all argument against it. I think that it's still a great game, even with the RNG, clearly, because lots of people are still playing it. And that's my opinion on that. What about plus one, minus one? Wouldn't that be an easy solution? Henry Louis, 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 Men Menchen? Menken once said that for every complex problem, there is an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. <laughs> I guess he's saying you're wrong. <laughs> Speaking seriously, the current matchmaker sports two tier battles. There's no indication people are enjoying them more than three tier ones. Issue. Okay, that I, I, that's sort of a throwaway. You. That's an interesting answer to me because earlier on we talk about, hey, we don't do anything without hard numbers and we look at the facts and we don't use feelings and then that really is a feeling. I don't know if you've ever really asked the question or, or paid attention. I personally like the three-tier system. I do not particularly like 357 as a hard-coded part of it, but that is speaking out of two sides of my mouth just a little bit right there. Two tiers, I don't know. I don't know if I have more fun. So I'm, I'm with him as far as I don't know if I like two-tier or three-tier better. I know that I don't like being bottom-tier all the time. That's what I do know. I also know that in a 357, that's probably where you're going to end up if you're not running a 9 or a 10. That's just how it works with this pyramid hierarchical kind of 357 setting. It's just that's how it is. All right. So they're looking at it. Why has there been focus on map changes that seem to discourage ranged play? I don't agree with that question. I think there's been a focus that encourages ranged play, and he actually mentions it. Also, I've heard complaints that we have too much bush sniping. That Several of the maps they changed have, have just sniper nests all over them. And some of the changes I've seen coming up are sniper nest kind of changes. The games, the, the reason you think... Uh, let's see discourage ranged play I don't know I don't get that question I don't I don't see that so maybe I'm completely off the what well, I was going to use a, a term that I can't say that completely out to lunch can I say out to lunch is that my hurt anyone's feelings without the lunch <laughs> when I say off though I'm pretty sure you know what I was going to say but maybe I'm out to lunch I forgot my lunch and I'm out there and I, I cannot eat my lunch because I'm out to lunch <laughs> no wait I'm not in the I'm not in the office because I'm out to lunch that's what it means right I don't know, man, because it seems to me they've discouraged close in play by the reference to the earlier discussion of the maps that used to be the face punch maps. They're all gone, most of them anyway. All right. Will there be updates or changes 
to how map rotations handle so that we do not see the same maps or similar style maps over and over. You know, they did change that when they, the new patch came out. And the problem is there's just fewer maps. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, with current map selection, the chances to play the same map twice in set of seven matches are less than 1%. That's not true. That is simply not true. <laughs> That's not even close to true. I see the same map all the time within seven. And it's certainly not less than 1%. What on earth? That is... That is a bald, fla bald faced uh, fib. You know what? Confirmation bias. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay attention to that now. I'm gonna I'm gonna AB. I'm gonna say that I cannot definitively prove you're wrong, but this seems this seems wrong. Current map selection. The chances to play the same map twice. Okay, are we talking about same side? If we switch sides or mode, is that considered not the same map? Interesting. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to pay attention to that. Because I feel like, here's going back to feelings and not hard data, I feel like I often see the same map within seven, and it's definitely more than 1%. When will the British light tank get light tanks? That would be cool, but unfortunately not for a while. When are we getting the chieftain? I don't know, man. Everyone is so hard over about the chieftain, the chieftain. I mean, yeah, it's more content, but whatever. Shift towards selling things like preset camo. Yeah, they're going to keep doing that. Roaming idea completely scrapped. It wasn't scrapped, but they're not worried about it because not too many players want it. <laughs> I'm a little mixed on that. Good functionality seems like it would be something you would just put into your game. The fact that few players are going to use it now doesn't mean a lot of players would use it later, would not use it later. When it comes to in-game physics, are there current plans to revisit physics to deal with some of the weird behavior regarding rocks, buildings, and how tanks flip? Yeah. They're tweaking it, but they're not going to put the rocks back the way they were. This is coming from, I think, the climbers and people like, like to find different places on the map. Rocks are weird. There, there's a point where they go from very grippy to, to ice, and you just you fly off of them. So they are a little bit weird. I like it a I like it for the most part because I did not like the spider tank thing of tanks hanging off edges and shooting straight down and not falling off. So as far as that goes, but that's personal gameplay issue with me or preference with me. A lot of people liked it. So it doesn't look like they're going to go back, but they are continuing. Because there are some weird hitbox issues, to be quite honest, with some of the... And I've showed them in some of my videos where it looks like you have a clear shot, but you're actually shooting into the hitbox. In general, if you have a highlight on the tank, your shot's going to be okay. In general, that's not always true, but in general. Well, easier method of riding flip tanks? No. That's talking about if I'm flipped, I can use a kit to, to ride myself. Right now, it requires somebody to tip you back over, and if they do too much damage, they get banned. So it's a great system. <laughs> There's the rocks thing I talked about. I, I guess I went off on a little bit on the... Uh, yeah, these were two of the same kind of similar questions. Uh, more regular... Branches in the works for existing nations, it's, yes, so that's good. More content is good. Armored cars, they're working on it, but they didn't quite like it. The dual turret thing or dual gun thing is still on the table, but they didn't quite like. If you remember back last Halloween, we had the two turret tank. They didn't quite like how that worked out. They're still working on the ST, I think it's an ST2. It has two cannons on it. Talking about recordless rifles, auto cannons, and things. Uh, they're saying they don't fit, but who knows what the future holds with the wink. Okay. <laughs> World Tanks 2.0, the modern version. Balance sweep back through the old tanks. That's They're talking about it. There's a lot of older tanks that need a lot of help. And that's pretty much the end. No, that's not true. We're, we're still going. NA staff's answers. Plans to help moderate in-game toxicity. We have implemented a monitored system that detects and punishes players who use inappropriate language. And we still ban players regularly who are reported via the in-game reporting system. All right, good on them. <laughs> That's probably going to go poorly for a lot more people than we think. <clears throat> I don't care about the language. I honestly don't. Turn on the filter. Put on your big boy pants. There are things that don't need to be said. But if you're losing your mind about it, then grow up, as far as I'm concerned. But 
the bumping in, the shooting each other, the the shoving people out. That that's gameplay connected, which irritates me. Why continue to revamp old maps over and over instead of make new maps? There are actually several new maps currently in development, so there you go. Indication of Wargaming, they're leaning towards keeping Artie or removing Artie. There are no plans. To, oh, well, there you go. So all you Artie fans, there, there's your quote. Go ahead and use that for the next 40,000 threads. <laughs> Is there any consideration to move stun? No. <laughs> Could have more Legionnaires? Yes. Would there be consideration for 753? be top tier more than three five seven it's an interesting idea it seems like it'd be exponentially worse experience for the bottom eight <laughs> well I'm not gonna get into it the old matchmaker was fine it just had a couple problems you could have fixed and it would have been much better than this one again the plus two minus two we talked about that last year gold was flowing freely this year it has dried up and been replaced by bonds boosters and premium time what has changed in general we we're trying to bring back different ways of earning different kinds of rewards overall I don't understand that. The The idea that I need multiple kinds of currency to, to complicate how I get things in the game, I, I don't know where that comes from. I guess it's a model that works in other games. For me, it's just irritating. The whole Bonds thing when it came out, I'm thinking, what what are you doing? What, <laughs> what do we need Bonds for? What, give me gold and I'll, I'll buy your premium tank or whatever with the gold. They're like, oh, we get bonds, and then maybe we'll have tanks for bonds, and certain things you can get bonds for, and certain things you can do this. For. Who cares? Why? You... It's bizarre. It, it's bizarre. There's no reason for it, other than potentially to make you play more to get the different things. That I do understand from a from a game design standpoint and keeping people interested in the game. I I get that part, but it's irritating. So I think really at the end of the day, it's more irritating than good. For the player merge gold for xp with warships and a unified account i this one i don't understand either very 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 irritating why other games can't share gold and stuff i don't know i don't get it uh we'll be able to purchase tanks for bonds that's what i was talking about but they don't have any information on it are these things going to be on sale a couple overpowered tds possible the answer is yes, of course they will. <laughs> if history is any guide, you know they will. <laughs> Why was information release, information release day about weekend events removed from Thursday to Friday? Generally, this will be covered ahead of time in the monthly previews on the news portal. People, look, man, people don't go to your website that much. They just don't. And they don't because it's hard to find stuff. And if you don't make stuff easy, if I know on Thursday that I can go and one of the main, on the, the one of the main, you know, six items right there is weekend specials, and I can just click on that and find out what they are, then I'll go to your website, and then I might dig around. But if I know I have to go and I have to dig in the ca into the calendar, and I won't bring it up, but then I have to look at all the events and the little lines for what day they are, and it, it's not obvious to me what's what, and I have to dig. I'm not going to go. I'm not. I, I don't, I'm not going to look at it. And then I might not play your game. I will, because obviously I'm addicted. But talking about new people, I don't get. I don't get that. That's weird. Any plans to introduce tiers beyond ten? No information at this time. That's not a no. I don't know if Cabbage knows. I mean, he might, but he's he's an A guy. Um, is there any news on a potential ammo rework? Although he was just out there, so who knows? None yet. It's in the cards, though. This one is. A, that's a big question. And it was teased well it's been teased for a long time but it was seriously teased what was it, about a year ago they talked about a rework on gold ammo not gold anymore but premium ammo that's a big one and that's probably the biggest of all the questions we run into that's actually the most germane to gameplay in the game is fixing the premium ammo thing because pressing two yeah, let's not i'm not even going to go down there we're going to let that go we're going to we just drove by that lane and there's a there's the white van with the candy and we're not going. We're not going down there. <laughs> when will we get true crew retraining special again? This has come up a few times recently. Hope you took advantage of it last weekend. <laughs> I don't. These questions may have been sent before the weekend event, but there was one that just went through. <laughs> oh, and then, then TL piles on. We just ran one, you bozo. <laughs> now wait a minute. Was the question asked before the event? <laughs> 
So anyway, thanks to the staff for answering that. Thanks to who the heck? I can't remember. There's a Reddit guy that put this out. What is his name? Zing, zing, zing. Well, this was compiled by Toll House Frank, but I don't know who, if that's who put it out on the website. Let's go over to the website. Uh, Private Public is the guy who did this, I believe, and set this thing up. So cheers to Private Public. Thanks for those answers. Cheers to the WGNA guys. Um, we're not buying all of it. <laughs> Pretty good answers, though, actually. None of it that really... You know what? That was interesting. Other than maybe one where I talked about the, the stats thing on the tanks, usually when I, I look at the, the Russian developers doing these, sometimes you, they, you, know, you just got the head scratcher. You're like, what on earth is this guy talking about? But I think you can probably chalk that up a lot to the interpretation, unfortunately, the syntax and all that good stuff. But I didn't really find much in this one other than that one. All right, let's move on. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just about done with my coffee. We talked a little bit about Kursk. We did the weekend specials. Talked about the sales and whatnot, the Store Depot revamp, which was pretty good. Not quite perfect, but pretty good. Uh, subjects du jour, the Kharkov, changed a little bit about maps, and we really dug into the WGNA answers, question and answer stuff. That is all I got for this week. Enjoy your tanking. Got Miserable Monday coming up tomorrow. Got another episode of the misery of Monday tanking. <laughs> and as usual, the rest of the stuff, I have a lot of videos stacked up. Please keep sending them in. Obviously, I'm not going to be, be able to use everything that you guys send. I will try to at least look at replays, especially if you're asking me for an analysis. It may not be a full video analysis. And really, you help me out if you say, hey, could you just take a look at this and give me a couple pointers or tell me, hey, I'd like a video analysis of this because then I can sort of prioritize which one is which. Uh, coming through there. If you're new and I haven't done one for you, I will obviously attempt to, or will not attempt, I will make sure I get you a video analysis of whatever you send to me right there. And I'll continue to try to kick out the videos from my own gameplay as well to help everybody improve at World of Tanks. I do appreciate the, I do, I do want to say one thing, I do appreciate in the, in the uh, comment section of YouTube, in general, everyone keeps it civil and everyone's trying to help each other. So Shout out to everybody who does that. There's a couple people in particular who do a really nice job of that, you know, congratulating people or sending out other other points of view, which is fine because I'm not telling you that I know how to do it the right way. In fact, there are, that's one of the beauties of this game. There's multiple right ways to do it. I happen to think I have some of the better right ways, but I could be wrong. Point of all that is that everyone's keeping it civil and it's a discussion, which is great. If I do a replay review of yours, and I say something in there that isn't correct as in what I think you're thinking or part of it didn't go the way I said it was or you had a reason for doing something that I said, hey, you did something wrong here, please put that on there so that we can discuss and it may have a finer point at that point to get to or you may clarify something that I was confused about in the replay and that ultimately helps everybody play the game a little bit better. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm done with my coffee. We'll see you later.